On today's show, the Renault 5 returns as an electric car, Kia announces it's going to use EV plus number for its new electric vehicle lineup, which, yes, does mean it will make an EV1, and Sony shows us how far it's come with its Vision S concept car, a car that's looking more and more production ready every single day. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another weekly news roundup show. It has been jam packed and we've got plenty to share today. So let's get on with it. Usually, at this time of year, our entire team would be driving back from a crazy week at CES in Las Vegas. But this year it all happened virtually, because COVID. We've done a little less coverage this year than usual, but we will be featuring some of the larger news items from the event in today's show. As for the smaller things, well, Hyperion was in virtual attendance with a new video of its hydrogen hypercar, as was the Cartivator SkyDrive VTOL personal aircraft, which says it's targeting a 2023 launch date. We also saw a robotic charging arm from Korean company Modern Tech, and of course, autonomous vehicle after autonomous vehicle. I'm not going to lie, while CES is fun, I am kind of glad we didn't have to deal with it this year. If you grew up in the 1970s or 80s in Europe, you are probably familiar with the iconic Renault 5, a car that you may know in parts of North America as the Renault Le Car. Those of you who know your EV history will know that US Electricar sold a converted Renault 5 called the Electric Leopard, but this week Renault debuted a new Renault 5, a sporty, all-electric prototype for a car that it says we can expect on the market in a few years' time. Taking its styling cues from the 80s Renault 5 GT, there's not a lot known about the car's performance or specifications yet, but given the fact this prototype is closer to its sporty ancestor than the original frugal Renault 5, well, I'm going to expect good things. Let's hope it lives up to those hot hatch expectations, eh? The Tesla Model Y has officially received its crash test ratings from the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, achieving five stars all across the board. This puts Model Y in the same five-star rating category as Tesla's other three mainstream production models. And while a Model Y long range was the tested vehicle, Tesla says it, quote, expects similar results for all Model Y variants. While NHTSA doesn't make particularly detailed ratings available on its website, something that other test bodies are much better at, Tesla noted in a statement this week that the Model Y also recorded the lowest rollover risk ever recorded for an SUV at 7.9%. That is lower than the Tesla Model X at 9.3% and lower than the Audi e-tron at 9.2%. Nicely done. Three-wheel electric vehicle manufacturer Akimoto announced this week that, following on from a year where its share price rose by more than 700%, it had successfully acquired a new production facility to facilitate higher volume series production of its two-seat, three-wheel Akimoto FUV. The facility, a few blocks east of where Akimoto's current Eugene, Oregon headquarters is located, was purchased for ten and a quarter million dollars and features 155,630 square feet of factory space. According to the company CEO Mark Fronmeyer, the purchase deal will close at the end of March. Akimoto hopes to have series production of the FUV at the new location in full swing by the end of the year. For some time, we've been hearing about the failure of eMMC chips within the media control units of older Tesla Model S and Model X cars. Originally, Tesla had asked owners of cars which had fallen out of warranty to pay out of pocket to replace those units, which, when failed, could make it impossible to use the car's massive touchscreen. Then, more recently, it did begin replacing failed units, even on cars that had expired warranties, and fees depending on how old the car was. But this week, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the US officially asked Tesla to issue a recall campaign to replace and rectify the issue on the 158,000 affected cars, stating that the bricked screens could lead to a crash. 
It's not clear if or when Tesla will comply with this request. Kia held a press event this week during which it showcased its rebranding, including a new logo, as it shifts away from traditional internal combustion engine vehicles and focuses on lower emission EV solutions. During the event, we saw a sneak peek of a number of new vehicles that Kia wants to bring to market, ranging from what looks suspiciously like an autonomous mobility pod to what I'd guess is a self-driving shared access vehicle, as well as more conventional personal cars. Sadly, the presentation doesn't go into vehicle details. It's mainly corporate speak. But one thing that I did catch was the naming convention chosen by Kia. It wants to use the prefix EV followed by a number, with EV1 through to EV9 already planned. I'm glad to see EVs coming, but EV1? That's a special name that we shouldn't be reusing. In 2020, we saw a lot of electric car companies joining the stock market through reverse mergers with SPACs, that's Special Purpose Acquisition Companies. We're only a few weeks into 2021 and it already looks like that trend is set to continue. Proterra announced its own reverse IPO this week with Arc Light Clean Transportation. The reverse merger is in fact backed by Daimler, which has a sizable shareholding in Proterra. Not to be outdone, it now looks as if Lucid Motors is also following suit with a proposed deal with a SPAC belonging to investor Michael Klein. There's no official word on this deal, but as you know, I am not a fan of SPACs and feel it adds extra risk for both sides of the equation. What do you think? Just over a year ago, the team behind Long Way Up completed their journey from the southern tip of South America all the way to Los Angeles. They did so, for the most part, with prototype Harley-Davidson live wires and very early prototype Rivian R1T pickups. This week, Rivian invited some of the original crew back to get a sneak peek of the latest production in 10 R1T and gave the series director, David Alexandrian, the chance to get behind the wheel. While the short film doesn't give us a whole lot of extra information about the truck, it did show rather nicely the tweaks and changes that were made as a consequence of that long distance road trip, but also some of the refinements that will be in the production vehicle. And given the R1Ts did have a few issues during Long Way Up, I'm super glad that Rivian made this video and shows how ready its vehicles are now for market. At CES last year, we were all surprised when Sony unveiled a fully functional prototype electric car in the form of the Sony Vision S. At the time, Sony had said it had built the car in order to highlight some of the integrated technologies it had developed for the auto industry, and it said it had no plans to bring the car into production. But as last year progressed, we started to see a change in that attitude. This week, it pretty much confirmed what we already knew, that Sony is now seriously considering bringing the Vision S to production as a luxury electric car. Sharing videos of how the car is progressing through testing, we see a prototype Sony Vision S wearing Austrian license plates and frankly, looking far better on the road than some production intent cars I've seen in recent years. I would love to see this one come to reality. What do you think? And finally, Tesla has, for many years, battered away rumours of refreshers for both the Model S and Model X, with the classic design of both vehicles not really changing much during their lifetime. Sure, the battery packs, drivetrain and autopilot hardware have changed, and there have been a few nips and tucks, but other than that, they're pretty much the same as they were. This Friday, though, we learned that Tesla has sent a memo to its staff telling them that it has a goal of selling out of its entire inventory of Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X by the end of January. Given that its Fremont production line for both vehicles is currently closed, again, rumours abound of retrofits for refreshed versions of both cars, that shouldn't be too tough to do. But it also intensifies the likelihood that the Model X and Model S are about to get some of the things that Model 3 and Model Y have, like a landscape touchscreen display. I should reiterate, this is of course a rumour, but if you're in the market for a Model S or X, maybe now's a good time to get one. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, why not consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? They make it super easy to make that switch. And when you do, you will help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and use clean, green, renewable power 
that will keep the nation beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you to all enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!